Shalom. Welcome back. First and foremost, I want to give all glory, praises, and honors to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and salutations to you, Akim, pushing this word in sincerity and in truth. Back with another lesson. And this is going to be a, a quick lesson of a picture I got of a, a car that uh, was in front of me that read Acts 2 and 38. <laughs> all right. Now, this was a heathen. Or what I perceive to be a heathen, but so I'm gonna go with a heathen just for this conversation because it applies to most people on the planet, right? But this uh this lesson is gonna be dealing with the actual heathen. But anyway, on the back of this car, back windshield, it said read Acts two and thirty-eight. <laughs> so when you go to Acts two and thirty-eight, it says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yahweh Shai, uh, Mashiach, for the admission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy uh, Ghost. Right? So, this person that had this on the back of the, her windshield uh, basically believes that Jesus Christ died for the whole world. And anybody can repent and anybody can be saved. That is a bald-faced lie according to the Bible and according to the scriptures. And that is a profound understanding that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, has given his true man, elders, uh, uh, apostles in these last days, man. All right? The true understanding of this wisdom and the true understanding of this Bible, man. Because when you go to that word Catholic, it literally breaks down to universal. And this is a universal deception that this book is for the masses. And it's not for the masses. It's for the nation of Israel, period. I'm going to grab a couple of scriptures. You know, it's a basic lesson, but it's always good to go over certain scriptures. The first one I'm going to get is in the book of Jeremiah 3 and 23. It says, truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills, from the multitude of the mountains. Right. When you go to the hills and the mountains. This is dealing from different, different, uh, different lands, different governments, di different countries. These people that are not a part of uh, Israel, right, by blood, it's vain for them to hope for salvation because it's not coming. <laughs> What's coming for them is destruction. So let me read it again. Jeremiah 3 and 23. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills and from the multitude of mountains. Truly in the Lord our power is the salvation of Israel. OK. And from there. I want to go to. The book of Acts one and six It's going to be straight to the point. Uh, Acts one and six. When they therefore were come together, they asked him saying, Lord. Right. This is what the disciples congregation was asking. Uh, you know, I was shy at that time. Right. When they had saw him again. He says, when they therefore had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So everything in this book revolves around the nation of Israel, regardless if you like it or not. All right. There ain't no spiritual so-called Israelites that are not bound by the blood, man. The heathen nations have no part in this congregation. All right. The true heathens. Uh, that our mystery Babylon, a.k.a. America, are going to be destroyed, right? The ones that escaped or go somewhere else or come from another land, they're going into slavery. They're going into captivity pursuant to Isaiah, the 14th chapter. That is a prophecy that's going to come to pass. Isaiah, the 14th chapter has not happened yet. Verse seven. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father have put in his own power. Right. So they, they wanted, the, wanted the kingdom to come immediately then. Just like we wanted to come now. And through the spirit and through the prophecies, we see that the kingdom is nigh. From there, I want to go into the book of Revelation. Uh, let me get 21 and 1. It says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Right? And there were no more sea. So when you go into that new heaven, new earth, it's talking about new management, new rulership, right? When you go into the Apocrypha, the book of Ezra, or Ezris, 
it tells you that Esau is the end of the world and Israel is the, the beginning of it that followeth. Meaning Israel is going to be put up, put back on top. They're going to have an everlasting kingdom, as the scriptures talk about. And it's going to be for the Israelites. And all these other nations are going to be in what? Subjection, according to the scriptures. Verse 2, and I saw John, and I, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the Most High out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. There's a lot of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? When you read the scriptures, there's a lot of metaphors, right? Jerusalem is, is a people before it's a place. Okay, first and foremost, when you read the scriptures. And the bride ordained for her husband, especially in the New Testament, is dealing with who? The Israelites, man. That's it. You can't fit a whole bunch of different people uh, within, within, <laughs> hey, within that, man. That, that, that bride, that groom, is dealing with the Lord coming back for his people, man. Uh, period, point blank. You can't get around that, you know? Uh, let me get a quick scripture. This is Jeremiah 6 and 2. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman, right? So the Lord always, uh, basically, he, he uh, refers to us as a woman, man, okay? His woman. That's why all the curses, all the bad things that happened to Israel, right, as a nation was because we betrayed him like an adulterous wife. That's the analogy when you're reading uh, scripture, especially Jeremiah, especially Isaiah. But at the end, we're going to be received back. All right. It says, uh, Revelation 21 and 3, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the Most High is with man. And he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and the most high himself shall be with them and be their power. Right. And that's de dealing only with the nation of Israel. So that lady, <laughs> that heathen lady that had that, that read Acts 2 and 38 on the back of her car. A, they're going to be in for a rude awakening, man. A really rude awakening, man. All right. They're going to realize their whole life they've been lied to. Okay. To perpetuate, you know, this bullshit system. But with that, I want to give all glory, praises, and honors to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai. Shalom the next time.